Okay, so let's look at this and see. Okay, so what's the what's the goal? What am I trying to find in this in this um, in this problem? Okay, I want to know decigrams, right? I want to know mass in decigrams. Okay, what do I want to convert into mass in decigrams? Yes, you are all over it. I want to turn this into decigrams, right? So the 1.11 grams per milliliter, that's not what I'm starting with. Okay, so first thing to figure out is, again, what are you starting with? Where do you want to go? Okay, does that make sense? Um, uh, another, um, uh, 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 I know from experience that, that one of the big hurdles is kind of, if you know, we just to break down the word problem, figure out, okay, okay, what's it asking me? I see all these numbers. Which one do I start with? 1.11 or 75.0? So you see, you're going to start with 75.0 and try to get that into decigrams, right? So here's one other little hint that will help you, I think. Notice my goal is to get decigrams, decigrams, which is just one single unit. And I'm going to start with milliliters, which is one single unit. So there's no way I could have started with let's say grams per milliliter, because that's two different units. I can never take two units and get it down to one unit. If you see two different units, you can almost always bet that'll be a conversion factor converting between grams and milliliters or milliliters and grams. Everybody see that? Quick time out. Everybody see, right? Because this is a single unit going to a single unit. <laughs> oh, if I see two units, that's probably going to be a conversion factor, okay? That makes sense because it's going to convert between grams and milliliters. You won't start with the conversion factor as the first thing. No, no. You use that along the pathway to get you there. Okay. So, yeah, just a little help there. Okay, so let's try it out. So, you, you, you told me we're going to start with 75.0 milliliters. Okay, sounds good. I need to get to decigrams. So, I need some kind of a unit that has milliliters in it, right? Right? I, I, know, I know the first factor, whatever it is, has to have milliliters on the bottom for it to cancel. So what could I use? Yeah, the right. Yeah, one, yeah, the density, right? One point eleven grams is a milliliter. Okay. Now I know the next one. I need something that has grams in it. Well, what could I do next? Yeah. What do you think? Okay, so, so, so you're, you're saying grams going to decigrams. Okay, well, I know I want to get to decigrams, right? So let's turn grams into decigrams. And you said deci means 10 to the negative 1, and that absolutely goes on the bottom, right? It goes the opposite of where that, where that, whoop, why is this not showing up? That's weird. I got it drawn on here. <laughs> oh, reconnecting. Yes, okay, so one decigram is 10 to the negative 1 grams, right? I don't know why this is reconnecting. Sorry about that. That's never happened before. There it goes. Okay, so what'd you get? Oh, yeah, question. Go ahead. Is the quiz um, on all this, it's all on all this, it's also on the other green sheet that you gave us, all the periodic table? No, that one's on Thursday. That one's on Thursday. No, what, right? Right? What I said? Did I say th or say Tuesday? I think I did say Tuesday the first time, but yeah, we'll make it Thursday. Okay. Let's do that. So, so, so Tuesday is the chapter one because the homework's due Tuesday, so the quiz is always whenever the homework's due. So let's say Thursday is the green sheet front and back of the elements. You should know those. You know those first forty or fifty or whatever it is the elements there. What? Right? right? Yep. Yeah, that green sheet you have them front and back, right? So again, make flashcards, right? So put on the front side aluminum, the back side AL. Front side of gold, back side of AU, and just go over them. You'll know them in no time. This says, okay, so what'd you get for the answer here for this one? 832.5. So you said? Okay, well, let's check our sig figs, because that doesn't sound quite right, does it? How many significant digits are in 75.0? Three. How many are in 1.11? Three. How many are intended the negative one? That's exact, right? Because that's been defined, metric to metric, right? 
So three, three and exact. How many should my answer have? Three sig figs. So the answer is going to be 833 decigrams. Right. Okay, good. Let's try another one. The density of blood plasma, mm, delicious, is 1.03 grams per milliliter. What is the mass in kilograms of 1.0 gallons of blood plasma? One gallon is 3.785 liters. Okay, so we got a whole lot of numbers in here again. So the question is, which number do I start the conversion with, and what's my goal? What am I working towards? So somebody help me think through that. So what's my goal? How about that? The goal is I want to find what? What do I want to find? Mass, Mass in kilograms. You are so right. Mass in kilograms of what? 1.0 gallons, right? So I'm going to start with... 1.0 gallons, right? Yeah, I'm going to tell you again and again, I see students try to start with 1.03 grams per milliliter. Can't do that one, right? Because again, that one has two units, right? So that one's probably going to be conversion factor, not something you're going to start with, right? So those two units kind of is your hint. Oh, it's two different units. Okay, so I'm in gallons, and I want to get to kilograms. How the heck can I get from gallons to kilograms. Well, I see gallons and liters. I see grams and milliliters. So how would I start? Which one would I use first? What's the... Okay, that sounds good. Okay, well, why? How'd you know to use 3.785 liters over a gallon first? Because why? Right, so I need something that has gallons in it to cancel out gallons, right? And the only thing that has gallons in it was one gallon is 3.785 liters. One gallon is 3.785 liters. Okay, that sounds good. Okay, now I'm in liters, and I want to be in kilograms. So, I don't see anything else up there with liters or kilograms, but what could I do? One milliliter. Okay, well, I do see, I don't see liters, but I do see milliliters. So, yeah, so if I could connect liters to milliliters, then I could connect milliliters to grams. Okay, so, yeah, that's just, so we need something that has liters on the bottom. Very good. So we're going to put liters on the bottom <coughs> and milliliters on the top. Okay, quick time out. Do you all see why I chose to do that one next? Right, because I'm trying to get, oh, I see milliliters here, so maybe that will get me closer. Okay, so what's milli, 10 to the top or bottom? Yeah, the milli's here, so this always goes on the bottom, right? Opposite. Okay, now I'm in milliliters. I need something that has milliliters in it. Oh, yeah, now I do have the density. 1.03 grams is one milliliter. Right? So keep going. Now I need something that has grams in it. Okay, I'm in grams. I want to be in kilograms. So let's do grams, kilograms. That one we can do. So one gram a kilo is 10 to the third, right? Okay, so. Let's punch this in our calculators. I got 3.89855 kilograms. Is that what you got? Okay, let me take a quick second. Let me just kind of highlight again how I suggest entering that in your calculator. <laughs> just so we're all using the exponent key, trying to be as efficient as possible. So 1.0. Okay, 3.785 is on top, so I'm going to multiply by 3.785. 10 and is on the bottom, so I'm going to divide by, hit my exponent key, negative 3. 
1.03 is on top, so I'm going to times by 1.03. 10 to the third is on the bottom, I'm going to divide by exponent 3. That's the most efficient, less error-prone way you can enter it. Again, you can try to use 10 to the this and lots of parentheses, but every keystroke adds a little more change, you're going to screw something up. So I encourage you, try and do it this way and see if you can get 3.89855. Okay? Okay, let's look at our sig figs. Okay, so here's a very common mistake I see too. Lots of students will just write, oh, one. They won't put the point zero in there. So, so now they just threw away a sig fig, right? So they'll be, oh, that was one sig fig. Nope, that was actually 1.0. That was really two sig figs, right? See that all the time. 3.785. Is that four or is that exact? Four. No, it's exact. Yeah. <coughs> is it four or exact? It's four. <coughs> it is four. four. Why is it four? 3.785 liters. Liters is metric. Gallons is English. All right, two different systems, so it's not exact. The only English to metric exact one was what? One inch is 2.54 centimeters. Right? That, that's the only one. Okay, how about 10 to the negative third liters? Those are both metrics. That's exact. How about 1.03? That's a measurement, right? Somebody had to measure the density of blood plasma. Right? Or something. How about 10 to the third grams? That's exact too. So two, four, exact, three, exact. Answer should have two, right? Okay. So 3.9 kilograms. Three. Okay, let's have you try one. Try this one. In an ultrasound, sound waves travel through, through the liver at a rate of... 1,540 meters per second. How many centimeters will the wave travel in 23? What is that crazy unit? Microseconds. Microseconds. Good. Okay, try it out. Help each other out if you need to. Talk it over. Let's see how we do. So let me walk through this real slow again. So, so we know I'm converting that, right? Microseconds. And my goal is to get centimeters, right? So, start with what you know you're starting. So, if nothing else, write down in your paper, 23 microseconds, if nothing else. Okay, so you're thinking. Okay, so whatever my first conversion factor is, maybe you have no clue what it is yet, but you do know one thing. You know it's got to have microseconds in the bottom, whatever it is, right? Right? So, so, so you're kind of thinking, okay, so microseconds, microseconds, what do I see up there? I see seconds, meters per second. Well, okay, so, oh, we'll try to get microseconds and seconds connected because that you can do. Does that kind of make sense, right? So, uh, again, it won't say you have to do it if you're kind of thinking, oh, I, I know I have microseconds, but I need to get somewhere, somewhere familiar. What do I see? Oh, I see seconds, so let's try to connect those two. Okay, micro means... 10 to the what? Negative 6. Okay, good. On the top, right? Now I'm in seconds, so I need something else that has seconds on the bottom. Oh, now I do see seconds. Now I see meters per second. So let's put 1540 meters per second. Okay, well now I need, some, now I need something that has meters on the bottom, right? You know that much. Oh, well, meters. Well, what am I going? Oh, I'm going for centimeters. Oh, I have meters. I want centimeters. Okay, again, that's one you know how to do. You know how to do meters to centimeters. So what's centi mean? Negative two, top or bottom? Ten negative two on the bottom. Aha, look, now there's my centimeters. I got centimeters. So we can punch that in our calculators. So 23 times exponent negative 6 times 1540 divided by exponent negative 2. 3.542 centimeters. Is that what you got? Mm -hmm. Okay, now 
check our significant digits. So which of those digits are actually warranted based off the data that went in? So 23, what's that? Two sig figs. 10 to the negative 6th. Exact. exact. 1540. Four. Three. Three, yep, right. The end zero is not, is nothing again. Yeah, right. If there's a decimal there, it'd be four, but there wasn't. So three. 10 to the negative second. Exact. exact. Okay. So, how many should the answer have? What's the fewest? Two. So let's make it, what'd you get? 3.5 centimeters. <clears throat> how you doing? Okay. Let's try another one. A gasoline pump spits out fuel at the incredibly slow rate of 1.2 gallons in a minute. You'd be at Costco all day filling up your car at 1.2 gallons a minute. But anyway, how long in seconds will it take for you to get out 9.50 liters of gas? Okay, so break it down, right? You know, right? You saw what I was doing, right? You know, so, you know, so highlight the things you want or underline them. Try to break it down. Okay, okay. What's the problem asking me? What's it giving me? What's it asking me? So underline things, highlight things, whatever you got to do to break it down in your head and help you find those clues when you're reading it. Speedy over here, huh? Yeah, it's making sense. Hallelujah. So, what are you starting with? 1.2, 9.50, what do you think? What's that asking you to? What's your goal? What are you trying to find? Yes, yeah, so your goal is to find seconds. Yes. Yeah, you're right. It's, it's 9.50 liters. So, yes, you're starting with that number. So, so at least write down 9.50 liters. You know that much. Then try and look for something else that has liters or liters, you know, like in that. So. <laughs> ah, look at you this time. You guys flew on that one. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay, so I see a bunch of you are, are getting a little faster here. That's good. So what do you think? How many seconds will it take you to fill up your car? 130. 130 seconds? Okay. That's only, and that's only what? Less than three gallons. That's not much. Okay, so which one am I starting with? Which number did you decide to start with? 9.50, yes, don't forget the, the zero. That's you only have two sig figs and a three sig figs. Okay, so I need something up there that has liters in it. Oh, I see gallons, minutes. Oh, one gallon is 3.785 liters. There you go. So that'll help me. One gallon, 3.785 liters. Okay, now I'm in gallons, so I need something else that has gallons. Oh, I see gallons and minutes right here. So let's use the, the flow rate there of one point, oh, try again. 1.2 gallons on the bottom, right? Gallons is a minute. Right? Right? Right, you can always flip that over so the gallons will cancel. 
Now I'm in minutes, but I want to be in seconds. So minutes has to go on the bottom, 60 seconds on the top. And what'd you get on your calculator? Am I just one, two, five, one, two, five point four, five, nine, three. Okay, right. that's great. Okay, so let's try, do our sig figs real quick. 9.50, 3. 3.785, 1. 1.2, 60. So what's the fewest? Two. two. So how do I round that off to two sig figs? 130. Right? Or 1.3 times 10 to the second. Yeah, right. Or you could do it. Or you, or, you could, or you could try to get rid of that little placeholder zero and make it 1.3 times 10 to the second. Uh, do you want to close that door? Just a little more. Thank you, Jen. Yeah. That's been defined, right? So that's known. Right, right. Yeah, yeah. Defined to be true. So that's exact. Right, that was measured, right? Right, the floor, somebody had to measure how fast the gas was. That was a measurement. So the 1.2. Okay, let's do one or two more, then we'll move on to chapter two. Okay, that's it. Okay, okay, here's a fun one. This one has a lot of moving parts, but you can handle it. Yes, no oh, question first. Do we have to go to um, pounds and then out? You can skip it if you want to, yeah. You can okay. skip it if you want to. Can you just go 16 minutes or 54 like that? Uh-huh, you can okay. skip that if you want. Uh -huh. Okay. You can do that too. Yep. Okay, try it out. Of course, this data is from last semester. I didn't go through 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 and change the price of gold and the euro exchange rate this semester, but but, but it was accurate last semester. You said the element quiz is next Thursday. Next Thursday. Okay, cool. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Week from today. Okay, so right, think about it. You know, like I said, you know, underline things look important. Yeah. All right, what are we gonna do? Okay, let's try it here. So you told me we're gonna start with 100 point kilograms, right? So I need something that has kilograms down here. All right, you all, you all know that. So, what up there do you see that has something that, something something kind of like kilograms in it? Oh yeah, well I, yeah yeah I see grams right. So okay, so so let's try to get towards grams. So, ten to the third grams you were saying right is a kilogram. Okay, now I'm in grams. So so you told me oh this up here has grams in it. Okay, so the so the next part you can do it all at one time. You can do grams directly to ounces. Or you could do it in two steps. You could go grams to pounds and then pounds to ounces. You could do it either way. Now, sig fig wise, it's a little easier to do it in two steps, but but I'll show you both ways. Okay, so I'll show you all the one way, and then I'll show you. So you could do it directly in one step like this. That's totally fine. That totally works. Now my grams are gone, and now I need something that has ounces in it, right? So what has ounces in it? Yeah, the, the price, $1,289 is an ounce. Okay, now I'm in dollars. $1 is 481 euros. Okay. So then we can get euros, some big giant number. Three point three nine eight whatever times ten to the looks like sixth. Okay, so let's check sig figs. Yeah, so, yeah. So there's a little confusion on sig figs on this one, and I can certainly see why. It's that sixteen and four fifty four one that gives you a little confusion there. Okay, one hundred. What's that? 
Yes, that is three, right? So make sure you put in that decimal, else it's only one. So don't right, see so there was a decimal there, so that's three sig figs. If you only put, write 100, then you just lost two of your sig figs. So definitely three sig figs. 10 to the third, that's exact, right? Okay, 16 and 454. Okay. Now, now whenever you have any kind of a conversion factor, one of them has to be exact, at least, okay? They both can't be a, a, an approximation. So it can't be, oh, around 16 is around 454. One of them always is exact. So for example, right here the one was exact, right? Or here's the one exact, and that's the estimated. Or that's exact, and that's the estimated. So the question is in that one, which one's the exact one? Which one's the estimated one, do you think? 16 ounces is exact. How do you know that? Okay, that's one way, but <laughs> right. Because this one is English to English. One pound is defined to be 16. We know that one is exact. It's this 454 down here that is the three sig figs ones. If you do it in two steps, it'll make a little more sense. But I'll show you that here in a second. Okay, how about 1289? Is the price of gold defined or is it measured in? Yes, yeah, constantly being measured, right? It's being right estimated and changing all the time. So that's four sig figs. How about this one here? The exchange rate to euros. That's constantly right, 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 being measured and traded and going up and down. It's not set, right? So that's four. So the fewest is three. So how would I round that up to be three? Yeah, how would I do it? Three point what? Four zero times ten to the sixth euros. Okay, so let me show you that though in um, in two steps, and I'll and I'll make it make it make a little more sense, I think. Okay. Okay. I, I'm going to erase that if you're done. Have that written down? Have it written down? Okay, I'm going to show you in two steps. 100 kilograms times 1 kilogram 10 to the third grams. Okay, so now I'm going to do it in two steps. Grams to pounds and pounds to ounces. 454 grams is 1 pound. 1 pound is 16 ounces. All right. So, so again, we did it all one step, right? 16 ounces is 44 grams. But, but, but this, though, I think more clearly shows why the one was exact and the other one wasn't. So this one, you can see, this is metric to English. So, of course, the one is exact. This is three sig figs. Here, this is English to English, so the 16 is definitely exact. Does that make sense? Right? No, English to English, right? So both are exact. So yeah, so now you see, oh, that's why that was exact, not two, because that really was exactly what's in a pound. Okay. Okay, questions? Okay, well, that is chapter, um, what was that? Well, chapter one. One chapter down, nine to go. Woohoo! 10%. 10% done. One done, nine to go. So let's jump in. We still got, oh, yeah, we got half an hour. Good. So let's jump into chapter two. Um, so again, I'll say, right, so our homework is due on Tuesday, right? So get on the homework. Again, I've been encouraging you all along. Hope you've been doing some every day or two, kind of practicing it right up to now. Because again, if not, you're going to give them back being like, how did I do sick figs last week? You'd be like trying to remember, right? I'm telling you, come to class, practice it the next day or two. Come to class, practice. So even this weekend, try a little bit tonight or tomorrow. Try a little bit Saturday or Sunday. Try a little bit Monday. And if you have questions, come to see me on Monday or go to the Library Tutorial Center on Monday or go to your FLS or whatever, right? Go get help. Yes, but, but don't try to do it all Tuesday morning 
Tuesday morning prior to your quiz. It will not go well for you in this semester. I guarantee it. I've seen hundreds of students try that. They never do good. Never, ever, ever do that. Okay, regular and often. Yes? Um, is the quiz on Tuesday with this little schedule? No. Okay. No, it's not. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, the one on Thursday, the elements, that'll be a Scantron one. The one Tuesday is old school, show me your work, set it up, make things cancel, do your sick figs. Yeah, kind of like that. Yeah, so just write it out and show me whatever it is. Okay. Okay, so chapter two, we're going to discuss energy and matter. And does energy matter? <laughs> I'm just kidding. Yes. Okay, uh, yes. So let's look at energy and matter. Okay, well, energy, of course, is a major component of our universe. Now, you always think of the universe, you know, as being made up of physical things, but it's also made up of energy, right? All the light and the heat and the radiation, all that stuff around us is also another major component of the universe. Now, if you were to go ask somebody over in the physics department, uh, they would say, okay, well, energy is the capacity that allows you to do work. Okay, okay, so energy is the capacity to do work, to make things happen, you know, to push things, to drive things, to lift things, to change things. That's what energy is. And pretty much all energy in the universe can be classified as one of two types, either as what's called potential energy or as kinetic energy. Okay, one of those two types. All energy is either potential or kinetic. Potential or kinetic. Well, well, the behavior of matter is driven by energy. Okay, well, why do things react? Why do things glow? Why do things get hot or cold? Why do things explode? You know, why do fluids flow? Why do, I don't know, whatever happens. You know, why does blood clot? You know, whatever it is. You know, why does your heart pump? Well, all that behavior is being driven by energy in some form, right? So there's something that's, you know, again, you know, it's doing work. It's causing those things to explode or to form or to change or to do whatever, okay? So we really have to understand energy then to understand that. Okay, well, there is this law you might have heard of called the law of conservation of energy, which says basically that energy can neither be created nor destroyed, okay? Energy can neither be created nor destroyed. So what that means then is whatever energy um, uh, uh, is whatever energy we have right now then right now then in the entire universe is what we've always had is what we're always going to have. Is what we're always going to have because you cannot make new energy and you can't actually lose energy either. But what you can do though, what you can do though is you can actually change energy from one form to another. Okay? So you can change one form to another. Okay. Well, so in a grand and universal scheme, there is never a true um, energy crisis because there's always the same amount of energy all the time. It's just that your form of energy has changed. Okay. Maybe it was all stored up as a fossil fuel energy, and now it's been transferred all into thermal energy, but still the same amount of energy there. You've just changed the forms of energy. Okay, so it was... Or you can transfer energy between objects, right? So you can take this... I don't know, you know, um, as a calculator, right? And you can and you can push it, right, right, right. So I was transferring en energy, energy here, right, out of my hand into that calculator. Right? I can transfer energy between things, right? So you can push them or lift them or slap people or whatever you want to do, right? So, you, right, so all that kinds of, right. So now you're transferring energy from your fist to their face or whatever that is, right? <laughs> you're transferring energy, <laughs> but you haven't actually lost energy. You just transferred it. But again, like it says, like I said, it cannot be created nor, nor destroyed. So it never just comes out of nowhere, and it won't just vanish into nowhere, right? Right? You can transfer it. You can change types of energy. It was mechanical energy, and now it's electrical energy. It was, it was stored up energy and dynamite. Now it's thermal energy. It wouldn't explode it, but it was always there. It's just transferring types of energy, okay? You can transfer it into different things. Okay, so here's a funny little thing. So this is called... The Joule apparatus, and this was invented by a very famous scientist named James Joule. Maybe you've heard of him. He was from Manchester, England. And um, James Joule was basically then, um, uh, um, uh, basically then, um, uh, back in the 1800, um, back in the 1800s, he was trying to figure up, figure up the difference in the in the kinetic energy versus the potential energy. 
Okay, so what is potential energy? Potential energy is basically it's energy then that has been, you know, it's not actually doing anything yet, but it's kind of stored up in there and it has the potential to do something. Okay, so, so it's stored energy. It's stored energy. Now, there's two ways that we can kind of store up energy. One is based off the object's position, and the other one is it's based off the object's composition. What's it made out of? So you can store up energy either based off the object's, like I said, you know, where it's at, where it's located, or you can or store it up, like I said, just based on what's it made out of. Okay, so the very bonds that it's made out of are storing lots of energy. For example, and I'll give you a couple examples here on that. So, for example, let's say you have a big dam, and behind the dam is a bunch of water. Okay, well, the water then right now, right now, the back here behind the dam, isn't actually doing anything yet. Right? 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 Makes right? sense, but the dam breaks. All of that energy that's kind of stored up there would all change from potential energy into a big rushing tide of kinetic energy, right? Actually, energy in motion, actually doing something. Okay, or you have a spring, right? A spring, and it's been compressed. Okay, so it's all stored up. Then it's all stored up. Then, based on the position of the spring, and once you release it, well, now it transfers into kinetic, and it goes boing, right, and flies off, right? So, based on its position. Or another good one is the chemical bonds, like in food that you eat, or in the gasoline you put in your car, or in the coal you burn in a in a factory. Okay, so again, right, right, so that, so that, so that um, a hamburger, those french fries, whatever it is, right, when you eat it, it's not actually, it's not actually active energy when you eat it, right, right, it's all just stored up energy in the bonds of those fats and those proteins, or it's stored up energy then, energy then in the bonds of the gasoline or whatever, but the once you actually begin to, right, digest it, well, now it turns into active energy as your car moves or your body moves or whatever, right, so it's just, stored up in the actual bonds of the food, the gasoline, the fuel, the coal, the whatever it is. Okay, so that's potential energy. Now, the kinetic energy, like I said, that's the energy of the motion, when it's actually doing something now. Okay, so what's it kind of stored up? Now it's been transferred. Now it's doing something with all of that energy. It has some motion going on. So any object that's moving has kinetic energy, right? So, you know, cars, people walking, planes flying, you know, Leaves falling from trees, whatever. Those are all kinetic energy because they're moving. They're moving. So example, success. So, so once the water flows over the dam, well, now it's not just stored up. Now it's actually moving. So now, we, so now you have transformed all the potential energy into kinetic energy. All right? Swimming, right? So now that's moving, right? So you're taking food and stuff in your body, right? And fat, and fat where it's stored up, and now you're changing that into kinetic energy as you begin to move, right? Kinetic energy into motion. All uh, right, so working out, you know, you know, so burning the gasoline, right? So you put in your car, burns it, it drives the engine. Now it's motion, right? Cylinders are pumping and pistons are going and whatever's happening. Okay, okay. so let's just try a few. So if you had your Chapter 2 handout already printed out there, pull it out, let's look at a couple and see. So are these potential... Or are these kinetic energy? Is it stored or is it actually motion, actually doing something? Okay, just take your own guess there real quick. Quick on your own, real quick. Okay, so A, B, C, and D. Just have a guess real quick to yourself, and then we'll discuss it as a class. So what do you think? So write down your answer, take a guess. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay, so rollerblading, potential or is that going to be kinetic? kinetic? Kinetic, right? It's motion, right? It's moving. Yeah, definitely kinetic. How about a peanut butter and jelly sandwich? Well, it's not doing anything, right? It's just sitting there, right? Right? Yeah, that's, yeah, right. But there is energy, though, right? Stored up in the bonds of that food and that fat and that protein and those carbs, right? So there is potential energy in there. Once you eat it, 
then it becomes kinetic energy as you move and your heart beats and your blood pumps and everything, right? How about, how about mowing the lawn? Obviously, that's kinetic, right? Because you're moving, you're doing things. And then, of course, gasoline in your car tank. Right, right. It's, it's all potential energy, right? You stored up some energy in your tank for later. Okay, that's pretty easy. Well, heat is a kind of what's called thermal energy. And heat, or thermal energy, is always associated with the motion or the movement of particles. So, so the reason things are hot or cold, well, why is this hot or cold? Well, the reason is it's all based on the motion of particles, the movement of particles. So, the faster particles are moving, the greater amount the greater amount of the kinetic energy, and thus a greater amount of the thermal energy or heat they're producing. So when something is really hot, let's say you know it's a hot piece of metal or a hot liquid, that means the particles, the atoms and molecules, are vibrating or moving at a very, very fast rate. They have a lot of motion going on. Okay, so okay, so for example, example, I used to love these back when I was in in oh, my high school and college, Totino's cheap ass 99 cent frozen pizzas. I used to love them. And, okay, so right now you have it, and it's a nice, you know, cold pizza, right? So you heat it up, and it turns into this yummy, delicious, super unhealthy, 44 grams of fat per like slice or two slices, I'm like crazy, um, uh, uh, <laughs> pizza, right? So, so, so what happened from here to here? Well, again, when you heat it up, what are you doing? You're making all the atoms and molecules in this, they begin to move faster and faster and faster and faster and faster and faster and faster. And faster. And that's what heat really is. It is, a, is an increased motion of the particles. Because they're just either, so like I said, they're actually you know, either moving faster or they're vibrating faster or whatever. There's more motion in the particles. And that's what makes things hot. Okay? Oh, I should mention, though, uh, by the way, though, and vice versa, right? Um, 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 uh, so things get moved slower, particles move slower, well, then they're getting colder, right? So they go slower, slower, and they, that's, that makes them colder, colder, colder. Okay, well, how can we measure that? How can I actually put a number on the amount of heat or the amount of energy? Well, the common SI unit that we like to use is called the joule, which again is named for that same guy, James Joule, I mentioned, okay? So the joule is the most common scientific unit um, for measuring heat. And he was also the guy who, um, um, uh, he was also the guy then who um, uh, um, came up then with the law of conservation of energy I mentioned, right? So he kind of figured out, okay, so you can transfer energy between types, but you're not actually making things hot out of nowhere. What you have to do is transfer energy from something else to make something else get hot. Oh, um, uh, and by the way, by the way, this little picture is a picture of James Jewell's statue. So someday, so someday, um, I mean, if you're over, ever over in um, uh, Manchester, England, you know, inside the city hall, and right there then, walk in the front door, and there's a picture over here, a uh, picture, a statue over here of James Jewell, right here. So, so there's a picture of James Jewell I took when I was there a couple of years ago. So, <laughs> James Jewell. Okay, so there's a funny little picture. It's a little hard to see, but these are James Jewell's, James Jewell's custom-made thermometers. Okay, so he was obsessed, you know, with heat and energy transfer. So we were there, like I said, I, I, I guess it was two or three years ago now, at the Museum of Science and Industry in Manchester, and the curator was showing us around, and these are actually said, you know, his actual custom thermometers. Because, because back in the 1800s, most of the thermometers were really poorly made, you know, very kind of crude thermometers. And he was really, like I said, you know, you know, he was very much obsessed, you know, with small degrees and small changes in temperature and heat, trying to discuss energy. So he, so you had these all, um, you know, he said, you know, you know, made custom for him. And the funny story there that I heard from the curator was he was so obsessed with heat and this stuff um, uh, that actually then, um, 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 uh, that actually then on his honeymoon, he had to bring his thermometers with him on his honeymoon because he knew when he was going out on this honeymoon, there was going to be a waterfall nearby on the honeymoon. And he wanted to be able then to measure the temperature of the waterfall then at the top of the, th the waterfall and the bottom of the waterfall. And see, there's any kind of like a transfer in energy in the waterfall. I'm like, dude, you're on your honeymoon. Leave your thermometers at home. I mean, come on. But uh, yeah, so that's his, his custom-made thermometers. 
I wonder the little fun little factoid. Um, 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 Jules' father was a brewer. He made beer. You know the thing about, about beer making? Beer making is very dependent on temperature, right? It's a little bit higher, a little bit colder. It gets totally nasty or skunky. So, yeah, so part of Jules, you know, it's part of Jules' kind of interest then in the temperature, and he came from his father's work with beer and brewing. So, good man. Okay. 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 Um, um, so, one other unit then of the energy you've all heard, I'm sure, is the calorie, right? Because we're all obsessed with calories and eating calories and burning calories and counting calories and whatever. Right? So the calorie is another unit of measuring energy. So there's a calorie with a little small c. And one calorie actually is, it's the amount of energy it takes to heat up one gram of water by one degree Celsius. If you can imagine, okay, I'm going to draw a little picture here. Let's say this was my this was one gram of water right here, okay? So I was going to draw it as a little box, okay? So that's one gram of water. One gram. Okay, so if I were to heat this up, heat up here, right, you know, a little fire, and it went from 20 degrees Celsius, let's say, up to 21 degrees Celsius. Well, the amount of energy, the amount of heat that I had to pump into that to raise it one degree Celsius, that's what a calorie is. The amount of energy it takes to raise one gram of water, one degree Celsius. Okay, if I want to raise up, let's say, let's say one gram of water by 10 degrees, well, it would take 10 calories. Or I could raise 10 grams one degrees, and that's 10 calories, okay? So, so the amount of energy to raise one gram one degree is one calorie. So, so that's literally what a calorie is. Now you know, so you can go home and wow your family and friends. As we're counting calories. Oh, by the way, do you know what a calorie actually is? Okay. Um, so one calorie is exactly defined, defined, not approximation, defined to be 4.184 joules. So make a little note of that. One calorie is 4.184 joules. One calorie, 4.184 joules. And that is exact, okay? One calorie, again, defined, exact, not a measurement, defined to be true. Same as like, same as it kind of, you know, metric to metric engine. Okay. But, oh, of course, one kilojoule is a thousand joules, or you say one kilojoule is 10 to the third joules. All right. So one kilocalorie, same thing, is 10 to the third calories, right? Or a thousand calories. Okay, now, so here's a little chart that I kind of thought was interesting. It shows, okay, okay, how much energy is being used in joules for various kinds of activities. Okay, so how much energy then do you actually, you actually, you actually use them to sleep for an hour? We actually use 100,000 joules, 10 to the fifth joule. Actually, you know, you know, you know, you know, that's a whole lot of joules. Okay, how much energy then do you get um, uh, from one gallon of gas? Well, about 100 million joules in a gallon of gas, all right? So you can kind of see the different things. Yeah. World reserves of fossil fuel. It's a whole bunch. 10 to the 23rd, <laughs> right? 10 with a whole bunch of zeros after it. So lots and lots of joules, joules. Okay, so here you go. Here you go. I love Butterfingers. Um, uh, so a Butterfinger, make you hungry, has 270 kilocalories of energy when it's Actually, you know, actually burned in your body, metabolized. What is that in joules? So how many joules of energy are in that delicious, crunchy Butterfinger? So let's think about that. So we're starting with 270 calories, and we're trying to go to joules. So think about that. Try it out. Talk it over if you need to.
set it up. See what cancels. Remember the one I asked you to mark, right? One calorie, one calorie, one calorie is 4.184 joules, right? So make sure you have that in your back of your head. You're in kilocalories. <clears throat> okay, talk it over if you haven't. Help each other out. What do you think? How many joules? Talk it over. Okay, 270 kilocalories, and I want to go to joules, so I know kilocalories has to go on the bottom, so what do I do first? Okay, so what's kilo mean? Top or bottom? 10 to the third calories is a kilocalorie, right. And then what next? Calories to joules, which is what? 4.184 joules. It's one calorie. Okay. So you punch that in, and what'd you get? Some big number. Is that what you said? Okay, so how about six figs? 270. Two. Ten to the third. 4.184. Yeah, remember I said that one's exact, right? Don't forget that. That one's exact. Okay, so it should have how many? Two. So, 1.1 times 10 to the what, sixth. There you go. So yeah, you know, 1.1 million joules in a single butterfinger. That's a whole lot of joules, right? So yeah, so there you go. And by the way, by the way, um, 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 uh, um, uh, I noticed, I noticed all on the trips I was over in Europe at one point. Um, uh, um, uh, um, uh, actually, on food labels sometimes in Europe, you actually see the labels. It'll have the energy and calories, and it'll actually have it in joules both on the food label. Sometimes kind of interesting. So it'll have both there. So. Okay, well, well, temperature, temperature is actually um, a measure of the thermal energy. In a sense, it's actually measuring the kind of kind of the average thermal energy. So again, I said right, as, as things get hotter or colder, they move faster or slower. So when you are measuring what's the temperature of something, you're actually measuring the amount of motion in that substance. You're measuring, oh, it's hot, so they're really moving fast, or it's slow. So moving, I mean, uh, I'm not colder, so they're moving slower, right? So it's measuring, again, the amount of motion, the amount of kinetic energy relative to everything, okay? So again, hotter, more random motion, colder, less random motion. However, temperature is not the same thing as heat, which is a little bit confusing at first, okay? So saying something is really, is really hot, let's say, per se, is not the same as saying it has a high temperature, technically. Okay, so let me explain that. Heat is actually is actually the thing you measure in like joules or calories. Temperature, of course, is in like Celsius, right, or Fahrenheit. So they have so they have very different units. So heat is actually a measure of the transfer or the exchange of energy when you have a temperature difference. <clears throat> okay. 
So, I'll, so here, let me do this. I will give you an example like this. Let me try to draw something. Let's say I have two, two containers of water, okay? Here we go. Here's a lot of water. Here's a lot of water. So let's say both of these are at, oh, I don't know, let's say they're both at 100 degrees Celsius. Okay. So they both have the exact same amount of temperature, right? Same temperature, temperature, temperature. But if I were to, but if I were to throw a glass of hot water on you versus a bucket of hot water on you, obviously the bucket would have a lot more heat. Does that make sense, right? It would hurt a lot more, right? So again, heat is not the same as temperature. Because this temperature tells me, tells me then, tells me then, um, um, oh, then yes, they're both moving then, they're both moving then, both moving then at the same speed, right? The program moving at the same speed, because there's a lot more heat available in this one then, um, uh, um, uh, there's more heat than available then in the bucket to be transferred than there is heat available in the glass to be transferred. Does that kind of make sense? So again, again, heat is not the same as um, temperature. Okay, okay, well, okay, so how about this one? Okay, so you have a piece of, of ice, which is cold, and you drop that into, let's say, warm water. Well, again, now, so the heat measures the transfer into the energy from the warm water, it goes into the cold ice. So, so again, heat is measuring the transfer of energy. Well, so the warm water gets slower, colder, and the ice gets warmer and faster. So you're transferring energy from one thing to another. So that's heat, again, not the same as temperature. Okay, so this is measuring the transfer. This is just measuring, again, again, right, 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 the average motion, the average amount of kinetic energy. It's not measuring the transfer. Okay, a few more minutes left, and then we'll call it a weekend. Or at least I will. Maybe you have more classes. I'm sorry if you do. So, okay, so there's three scales for temperature. Again, you all know the Fahrenheit scale, right? That, one's, that one you're familiar with here in the U.S. And you may also know the Celsius scale, depending, depending, depending on your home country, you know, the Celsius scale. But again, I mentioned uh, back last week, though, the... the the one in science, though, that we really like is called the Kelvin scale, named for another English guy, Lord Kelvin. <clears throat> so, so let me talk about these guys real quick. So notice here, so on the Fahrenheit scale, of course, water boils at 212 degrees, right? Let me highlight, how about this highlight? And water freezes at 32. So that's a difference of 180 degrees between water freezing and water boiling. But on the Celsius scale, the difference is 0 to 100. So, so Celsius scale, right, the, the same thing, freezing to boiling, is only 100 degrees difference. You with me? No? Yes? Okay. So that means, okay, well, well, if that's 180 and that's 100, well, the, well, then this scale, the Fahrenheit scale, is basically 1.8 times bigger than the Celsius scale. So every change of one degree Celsius is the same as a 1.8 degree change in Fahrenheit. Does that make sense? So if I go up, so if I go up to let's say you know one degree Celsius, that's the same as going up. 1.8 degrees Fahrenheit. Okay. But notice the Celsius and the Kelvin have the same difference. So here, from freezing to boiling is 100 degrees. For Kelvin, freezing to boiling is also 100 degrees. So those have the same magnitude. So a change of 1 degree Celsius is the same as a change of 1 Kelvin. Same magnitude. So change of one Kelvin, the same as one Celsius, but that's 1.8 Fahrenheit. Okay, yeah. So isn't Celsius going to Fahrenheit, you multiply the Celsius by 1.8 and then add 32? Yes. Okay. Yeah, exactly. So, exactly. So you're going there right now. So, so there's 100, no, 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 no. Right, so there's a 1.8 degree difference, right? 
And you also notice then that, as you're saying, the Fahrenheit one is 32 higher than the Celsius one, right? Yeah. So exactly. So yeah, exactly. So the way we transfer Celsius into Fahrenheit is we do what you were saying. We're going to use that thing. We're going to take 1.8 or 9 fifths, the same as 1.8, that difference, times the Celsius, and then we're going to add 32 to it. So you can take the 1.8, right, I just told you, because it's 1.8 times bigger. So 1.8 times the Celsius, and then add 32. That's how you convert Fahrenheit into Celsius. Or actually, Celsius into Fahrenheit. Okay, I think we're out of time, but just write that down, and we'll do some actual practice with that next time. And just keep in mind real quick, this is exact, and that's exact. The 1.3 is real quick. Okay, well, uh, so when I see you Tuesday... Bring a scientific, non-graphing, no smartphone calculator right for your quiz. Else you better be really good at some long division. You'll be doing it by hand. So, okay, so. And please practice this weekend. Do some homework. Have any questions? Have any questions? Do you send me emails over the weekend? I'll try and check them out. And we will see you on Tuesday. Also, your lab's on Tuesday, right? So make sure you have your pre-lab questions done, your procedure written out. Uh, your table's ready to go, all that good stuff too. Okay, have a good weekend.